Hello again everyone, Sokka here and welcome back to another episode of Planet Zoo. Hey, we got a... No, you've, you've, you've got an accessible staff room. Matter of fact, keep on walking that away. It's on your left. Even I know where that is. People these days, I tell you. Anyway, welcome back to Planet Zoo. Uh, in the last episode, we finished up our African exhibit slash ticking time bomb uh, over here. I call it the ticking time bomb because with all of these different animals in here, uh, breeding and growing and all that other stuff, it's going to get really packed. Our ratios are going to uh, go nuts, but that is a problem for us to do in the future. We have a stress pangolin. Hopefully that'll be fine with our two-way glass and hopefully we get that done today. All right, we have Fillion. Hello, Fillion. We have LeBron James back again. Thank you, LeBron. Couldn't stay away, I see. Laura is back in the zoo. Welcome, welcome. AA201 is back. Welcome. Troll Nick CZ is back. It's like all the uh, ones that we had yesterday. Hello there, Lord Emmerhart. Uh, we have Leah 1809. Awful old if that is your birthday. And Don Bambus. Welcome, welcome. So some conservation credits for our eight VIP guests. And at the end of the last episode, we put in the red panda. And hopefully, uh, the red panda is going to attract some people. Uh, hopefully, they uh, do okay. What is without power? Oh, that is like right on the cusp. I mean, just oof. And you know what? I thought we had power before. I, I could be wrong. But when I looked at this before, this did have power. Uh, coming off of this particular... Uh, power station what we're gonna do then is we're gonna move it then uh, we are going to move it uh, right there and we'll just connect up a, a staff path to it then why not there now it has power now it has a staff path and we should all uh, be well and good vet research is complete uh, we were churning through these very very quickly on the research side uh, that is for sure uh, monkey pox, uh, that looks to be our last disease that we at least don't have one research in. Uh, so why not? Excuse me there, Noel. Let's research the first level of monkey pox uh, just to get that out of the way. And then we can see uh, what animals need the most enrichment uh, with all of this. Today's episode, uh, we don't have to worry about this particular exhibit anymore. Uh, we'll be focusing down here. Uh, branching off a path, say, over here. Looking at our power situation, we would need some power over here in the corner if we were uh, to power this area with, say, a uh, food court or something of that nature. Uh, let's look and see if we did plop down a power plant, uh, an actual transformer. Yeah, if we pop the transformer back here, it's more than meets the eye, and then we can run a path to it uh, and get that pretty well taken care of. So let's just go ahead and place that there. That is a little bit redundant with that uh, wind power there. But uh, it should be fine. And we'll uh, connect up to that generator. Uh, and what we're going to need to do, of course, is assign it to a work location or a work zone. Whoops. A work zone. Probably that's going to be work zone two. I would imagine no work zone two is over here. Work zone three is right here. Okay, so welcome, welcome, generator. You are now part of work zone three. And our mechanics can now uh, get to that power situation. We'll have to take a look at the negative impact on guests. This is as far out as, well, I mean, the guests are not gonna be walking up here. Uh, if we put an enclosure, say, here, and have a path come in right Oh, come on, Common Warthog, I tell you what. Didn't we get, like, a brand new Warthog in the last few episodes? All right, female, you're our alpha, so let's kick this female to the curb. Release you. I tell you, 12 conservation credits is not much. That is for sure. And I don't know how many Warthogs we have in this enclosure. We could probably find out really quick. Uh, but, of course... Fresh blood would be nice. We only have three animals. We have in, in Anbi, Ada, and Kini. 
So we'll wait and see if uh, that is the daughters of our uh, albino warthog in the next patch. Uh, we'll be able to see such things as that. And also on April 7th, they showed Planet Zoo the South American pack. So uh, coming up in about a week's time, uh, we'll, we'll be able to see some new animals, which is all well and good. But as I was saying before, uh, if we run a path, say, right here, uh, we won't get that negative penalty to guest happiness. And in fact, what we could probably do, looking at this power situation, is get more exhibits and, say, a food court over here. I think that would be uh, really, really cool. So what we're going to do is uh, run a path right about through here, uh, make like a, a horseshoe, and uh, get some food, some beverages, and some exhibits down, and I will be right back. All right, a little bit of the food court is done. We've got our pip shot water, our gulpy slush, pizza pen, our hot dog squad, gulpy soda, and chief beef all ready to go. We put down a whole mess of picnic tables and recycle bins around here, as well as an ATM uh, that popped up right over here. Um, one thing that we also can do is put down an information center, as uh, information center would be probably pretty good uh, to put down for in case of umbrellas or uh, things like that. Uh, how about a merch shop as well? Uh, just sort of make this area the, uh, the place to go if you want to eat or buy something. That would be pretty cool. Uh, and then an information shop, just in case you guys uh, want to purchase a self-guided tour or something of that nature. That would be good. Ha, something of that nature. Pun intended. All right, so we've got vendors here selling the loony balloons and information. We've got a bunch of uh, stalls open, and hopefully the people that come to see the Red Panda can swoop on over and uh, grab some food and drink. Uh, next up on the docket is our large exhibit. We have four exhibits here uh, ready to fill. Vet research is done. So uh, that is all of the diseases at level one. I'm thinking what we do is we get some exhibit creatures done first as uh, they should be pretty quick. So let's work on the, ooh, the red panda. Being brand new, no, they were at 100%. The, the things that we researched for them are actually really cool. Uh, was it our saltwater crocs that really needed some help as far as the enrichment was concerned? Yeah, only 50%. I think for our vet research, uh, saltwater croc is going to be the name of the game. Let's do our vet research here and make sure that our saltwater croc is selected. Noel, go ahead and get on that saltwater croc if you please. And uh, we can take a gander at the animal trading facility and uh, get it assigned to work zone three and then get uh, some more exhibit animals in here. So I will go ahead and get the first animal in that we don't have and uh, be right back. All right, for ease of use, I have made this area over here uh, work zone two. Uh, so now work zone two is three habitats, 24 buildings, and a staff room. It's a little bit more uh, spaced out. And our first and foremost animal that we have chosen for our first exhibit, let me see if I can find them. There we go, the Amazonian giant centipede. Uh, so that is pretty cool indeed. Uh, let's go ahead and get an educational speaker up here, uh, like us so. And we'll see, uh, pump some tunes for that Amazonian, Amazonian centipede, and we'll just plop it right about there. So as they walk in this corner, they can hear all about the Amazonian giant centipede. And hopefully that's going to be a bit of a draw. Hopefully some education uh, happening here. I'm never taking this hat off. Monorail one was full. Rain, well, that's not in my concern. Monorail, we might be able to increase the, the weight, the queue line. But, I mean, all of these things rotate out fairly quickly. It's up to you all to make your buddy smile and uh, clear up some space because there will always be a car unloading and then loading at full capacity. So the turnaround time for this monorail isn't actually that long. You get jackwads like this, like this guy, the poor man's Will Ferrell, who uh, decided to, he wants to take his sweet time in getting 
uh, off the ride, and then that delays these six people getting on the ride. And if they don't fill up a cart, then that's going to put people behind as well. I tell you what, but this should be a money-making fool, though. If we look at the finances, yeah, we're plus 7,000 lifetime, 2,700 bucks last year, and we are definitely beating the yearly running costs. Uh, so this is definitely a good investment for us. Just like I think, oh man, balloons are flying all over the place. Just like I think the Looney Balloons and the Information Center and all of these uh, eateries are a good idea, as well as, you know, taking a load off with the uh, picnic tables. Oh, Grady. We have an inspector doing seven, five, ten, four, and one. If I wanted to be uh, really, really organized, I would rename all of those habitats by the animal. So at a quick glance, I can say, oh, the inspector's coming to see red panda, warthog, uh, Amazonian, centipede, etc., etc. But I mean, people are taking notice of our Amazonian centipede. Uh, when our vet research gets done, we can see uh, these exhibit animals, uh, what else we can do to improve their exhibit. Uh, but then, Let's go ahead and get exhibit animal number two. All right, our second exhibit animal right next to our uh, centipede is the giant burrowing cockroach. Uh, we'll go ahead and turn on our education boards here and uh, get another speaker. Go ahead and duplicate that, put that right over here and change that to giant burrowing cockroach. And that will be animal number two. Let's see if we can find us a giant burrowing cockroach may be pretty difficult. They may be uh, right on the edge of the glass. Yeah, we're gonna have to uh, cheat and do it the old fashioned way. Embre, where you be? There you are. So just out of the light, but right there, giant burrowing cockroach is there. Uh, people coming on this side of the glass should have a very good time uh, spotting uh, the cockroach and looking here in our enclosure. Yeah, we don't know anything about the layout We also have a fighting Due to incorrect ratios of the Baird's tape here and the ostrich. So let's go ahead and get those uh, Fixed right now. We have two animals in here both female So we need to get a male in here um, Why not let's go ahead and get to our animal trading and find a male Baird's tape here that we can put in. That would be uh, ideal. And with this uh, Baird's tape here being completely new to this uh, to this zoo. Come on, filter. We shouldn't have an issue with uh, any inbreeding. That should be fine and dandy. Yeah, we're going to have to... Can we scroll down, please? Are we on page two? Yeah, it seems like this filtering is uh, still running pretty slow. I wish we didn't have to uh, be online for this particular part of it. That's why I liked uh, Sandbox. Because it just sort of generated the animals and you didn't have to wait on it to connect. All right, we need a male. And you are 1149 appeal and only $299 Yotl. Can I see Yotl, please? Yotl. Yoto. All right. Not very fertile. Here's a younger one for 329 A lot better. We'll adopt from Frontier Zoo. Gua Guatemala. Guatemala. Guacamole. There we go. Nice. Go ahead and move in guacamole. And guacamole should be put in just fine. So that solves that issue. Next was the common ostrich. All right, what animal ratio do we have uh, for the common ostrich that's throwing it off? Common warthog, black wildebeest, the buffalo, the reticulated giraffe, the ostrich. We have five animals, one female and three males. Yeah, I could see why that might be a problem. All right, let's select this ostrich, go to the Zoopedia, and see what kind of ratio we need. One male and then seven females, so the other males have to go. All right, that is going to be too easy. All right, animals will 
down at the bottom of our list. Yeah, this is the uh, the bad part about having a large enclosure. Uh, so we have a uh, Boondi and Ooga, Ooga Booga. You are going to be released to the wild. 49 conservation credits for the two of you. And now we are back. Um, yeah, and that, that should be fine until the, uh, the mail comes. And that will clear out just fine and dandy. We got some runners here. Looks like we also need some lights up in this piece. Let's go ahead and do some uh, duplicating here. Plop down some lighting. This is the uh, the shady part of the zoo. And I imagine down here by the food court it would be nice to have uh, some lights. Especially by the ATMs and such. And especially here at the information center and the balloon stop. And uh, even here at the exhibits probably wouldn't be a bad idea to put down some lighting. All right. Barrett's Tape here, we're working on a Arcane G Main. Arcane G Main. Okay, I was going to say, don't, don't, uh, don't walk in the enclosure, please. But you, you are all well and good. You good, girl, shoot. All right, animal distress, that's fine. Now, surely, I mean, we might be able to put a hiding spot back here, away from prying eyes. Although I imagine they could run far enough over here uh, that they wouldn't be completely surrounded. But it would certainly be nice to get the two-way glass uh, researched eventually. That would be uh, ideally what we do. Stress, 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 stress. All kinds of stress. I mean, that's fine. Overcrowding and the wrong ratio. Okay, so do you not have... What is your ideal... Yeah, too many adults. So one of you females has to go. Oh, crap. And then we got a sable antelopes about... Okay. Yeah, this is the part where I figured it would happen eventually. But it's like... You know, you're spending all of your time trying to uh, start the micromanage uh, because your zoo's so big. Certainly, opening up another branch or another zoo would be, uh, you know, ideal. That way you didn't have to worry about such things as those. But let's take a look at our sable antelope. All right, so we're at three females and one male. What kind of status do we got on here? Is that, was that inbred status? So we can't release Dada. Who all can we release then in order to uh, make this right? All right, so if we can't release Dada, can we release Carmira? No, we cannot. We must have purchased them for money. So we would have to trade away for money. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Send to the trading center, please. And let's get a fresh female in here if we can. Andy, Andy Shibobo. Anawaka. Yeah, you know what's coming. Don't you run. Don't look at Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones can't help you. You get traded. All right, and then we need to get our last sable antelope up in here. Dada. Sorry, Dada. Do 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 da 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 da. Goodbye. All right, we'll go ahead and do that. A hey, vet research is complete for the saltwater croc. So, did we learn anything useful that we can put? in our saltwater crocodile pen. Look at all the crocs. That is a croc, that's a croc of bull right there, I tell you what. All right, habitat, enrichment items, and then we're going to look at saltwater croc and see, do we know anything else extra that would benefit them? Ooh, the blood pumpkin, that's gonna be new. There you go, plop down that blood pumpkin. 
So how is that enrichment doing it for you? 63 for the blood pumpkin, large ball, and a large snowball. Large ball, large snowball. Let's put down a sprinkler. Are they good with the sprinkler? Yeah, 50. Are they good with the rubbing pad? They really like the sprinkler now. And there's the rubbing pad. So that is a lot of toy enrichment, but not a lot of food enrichment. So we've probably maxed out. Like, we could get rid of the snowball, I think. Snowball, <clears throat> delete. Yeah, okay, I see how this is working. So we could just use the rubbing pad. We don't need the large ball at all. We'll demolish that. And we'll uh, get rid of the sprinkler. Because right now, you are content as you will be with your toys. But we need more food. That is the... That's the kicker. So let's go ahead and continue researching the saltwater croc then. Low welfare with the diamondbacks. Are you guys getting full up? Yeah, three females and one male. So Zoe and Bianca, send to the storage center, please. One of our Nayala is about to die of old age. That is uh, to be expected. Select all in quick trade. Confirm. Then we have our animal trading in storage. Three sable antelopes. Release to the wild for 28. Outstanding. Yes, we shall. Bring that menu back. Bring that menu back. It's interesting. We can't select all. Either that or it is there it's posting them online so it's like it's not taking Kalavat Baraka is dead yeah we'll just have to look at our trading center I'll just have to go on good faith that it's actually working And maybe we don't get the credits until someone purchases them or something. I don't know. That could be. But I tell you what, it's almost to the point in this zoo uh, where every few minutes we're going to have to deal with uh, something that these animals are up to. Uh, and at that point, I think it sort of loses the fun factor. There we go. We did a challenge. Nice. Entry ticket profits of $30,000 will claim those rewards. Now we have Bongo Education and the Inspector Report of a five-star inspection. Still trying to work on that. Uh, we have no new visitors in the zoo. And yeah, you can see uh, stress. and We can handle stress, especially if we get the two-way glass. The mechanic is three-quarters of... Old Janelle is three quarters done researching our last barrier tech, the one-way glass. When that, uh, in, dang it, four stars again, the education. We did something right in Habitat 10 and 4 that Habitat 1 and really Habitat 7 don't have. And I bet, yeah, it's really tough to get people educated when the only way for them to see uh, these animals is by monorail. We can't exactly put a sign along the way to say, hey, while you're driving by this, uh, take a look. I don't know if I can put it down here. The last time I tried to do something like that, we got the error message that there was an improper education uh, item place. Yeah, lots of stress, lots of low welfare. It's going to be a great day when that two-way glass happens. And it may happen next time, everybody. I'm holy crap! Turtles in a half shell. Not only do we have Leonardo, Donatello, Michelangelo, and Raphael, but we got like, you know, Copernicus, and we got Galileo, and we got Armstrong, and we got holy crap on a cracker at the amount of tor tortoises that we have. Hey, African buffalo are fighting for alpha status. See, this is what I mean. Uh, at this rate, it's going to get to the point where everything that we do has to get fixed. All right. Who is going to be the male that fails? 
I'm right here ready to pick up right where you leave off. A 1532 lost to a 1575. Sorry for you, Columbo, but I'm going to need to have you investigate the, uh, the wild. There we go. Traded him out of the zoo. Luckily, most of this will go away when the two-way glass gets researched and we flip the aardvark and the red panda enclosures for two-way glass. That is going to be amazing. We'll do that for the Chinese pangolin as well. And if we can, like Baird's Tapir and Saltwater Croc, like every every place that we can swap for two-way glass, we will swap for two-way glass. So uh, at least we're not getting all of these stressed... Uh, low welfare notifications that would uh, be a lot funner when we're just dealing with the odd uh, rare inbreed and, and things like that you know cleaning things up uh, signing folks uh, you know the, the good stuff uh, the fun stuff uh, if it gets to the point where I'm just struggling to keep up we may be able to open another franchise zoo with our six hundred and ninety three thousand dollars uh, open it in another biome because there is an achievement for opening a franchise zoo in every biome, and I think there are seven biomes. So this is just one-seventh of the way there, uh, and we can focus, say, on the Arctic animals or, or something of that. Uh, conservation credits are really going to be uh, difficult uh, in the coming days, uh, just for the sheer fact of, like, the polar bears. You can't buy them with cash. You have to have 10,000 conservation credits, and we just don't have it. So that's our real big restriction right now is conservation. Uh, we're logging in semi-daily, uh, but every time we do log in, that's 100 conservation credits. Uh, we're doing releasing animals into the wild and selling them in the marketplace. Hopefully that is a thing. Uh, we are greeting everybody, and we're trying to complete community challenges. Uh, but uh, we have, yeah, the 300,000 common warhogs. We did participate in that. But uh, we got temperature. What in the world happened? Oh, crap. So it's March. It's winter. And now the animals that don't like negative 2 degrees Celsius, uh, they are going to be on the struggle bus. I'm not going to subject you to that. So this will uh, show me where to put heaters. I'm going to be putting down a lot of heaters probably off camera so we can get through this winter slump of March. Uh, hopefully that will clear up a lot of these, um, but I've got my work to do off camera, like I said. Uh, but that will do it for me in this episode of Planet Zoo, everyone. In the next episode, hopefully, two-way glass is a thing. We'll be able to do a mass replacement of most of these exhibits with two-way glass, uh, reducing the stress of the shy creatures. We have two more exhibits to fill up as well, and, uh... We should have some brand new heaters installed at, at the start of the next episode to uh, curb this winter chill. Two degrees Celsius minus. It's going to be uh, a lot of heaters. A lot of heaters for sure. But that will do it for me. Like, share, and subscribe if you are so bold. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I will see you in the next Planet Zoo video where hopefully maybe by that time we'll have the uh, South America pack. That's always exciting. Take care.